and welcome to West Country Wanderings. Welcome to my monthly vlog. Monthly vlog for the month of August 2023. Well, where are we today? We're in the village of Halatro. We may have come across that name before on the channel because this is where the Camerton branch, the railway branch, went from over Avon Valley, across here in the Soma Valley, towards the branch line that left Bristol heading south towards Radstock, Bristol North Somerset railway line. There is also the Somerset Coal Canal in this area as well. We're not going to be touching on a couple of those things today. We're mainly here for something very special though, which lies about a mile away from this village, which is close to places like Midsummer Norton and also south of places like Saltford and Canesham, which lies halfway between the cities of Bristol and Bath. The county that we're in today is Baines, Bath and North East Somerset, but we're also quite close to the Somerset border. So I hope you can join me today for another tour here on my monthly vlog, telling you about what's been happening on the channel, reading out the very best of your comments and telling you about this fascinating area here in Baines as well. Now Hallertro sits right on the A39, which is the main road between Bath and Wells. It is not its separate parish though, because it, just up the hill there, about a mile up the hill, is another village called Higher Littleton, High Littleton should I say, and this is in effect one extended village, though they are a little bit separate, as I say, because of the hill, which we will come across in a bit, that hill, because it gives us the defining feature of this village here today. We have this. There aren't, well, this is number 19, so there must be at least 19 dotted around High Littleton and Halitro. I'm not quite sure what the concept behind this, but I just think it's absolutely wonderful to have that here in Halitro. I'm currently walking towards Stevens Vale Nature Reserve, surrounded by lovely birdsong here. It's very early on a Sunday morning. I got up super early before it was light. I left home before it got light as well to make my way from where I live in Gloucestershire, crossing, as I say, down onto the Bath Road, the 46, down through Keynesham to make my way here into the Soma Valley. But yeah, this is just terrific. Lovely light here this morning as well. It has been raining quite heavy overnight. The field that I've just crossed over is quite wet, but it's really nice to be here with no one else around me. This here is where the old railway line from Limpley Stoke, which is where it left the GWR line, the main line still in existence, that heads out of Bath, going down towards Westbury via Bradford on Avon. It's where it left that, cutting right across the Cambrook Valley. The Cambrook is, I've just walked over it there. Unfortunately, I can't get access to a view. They've got the busy road or private property, so I can't film in that location, but you have to take my word for it. The Cambrook's just over there, the other side of the field. And just above the Cambrook, you have the old railway line, and this is the railway line that once left Limbley Stoke, heading its way to Halitro. We're in the village now, and about half a mile down there is where the station was, and I think it has been restored to some extent. Let's see if I can get a shot of that before the end of today's video. And it continues through that way. It's private property, can't continue that way. We're gonna head up that way into the nature reserve here. So this is the delightful Cam Brook here. As I say, we've come across this river before when I was doing my Somerset Coal Canal video, part one. There will be a part two. I am is in the process of planning that, doing some extra work. I bought a couple of secondhand books on that canal, doing some research for that. So hopefully that might come up before the end of the year. The railway crossed over the Cam Brook just over that way, but I can't get access to, to show the bridge, unfortunately. But while I'm here in this most delightful spot, I thought I'd tell you about what's been happening on the channel here this month on West Country Wanderings. The first video that landed on the channel for this month was, of course, last month's vlog for the month of July. 
And in that one, you may recall that I went to the wonderful Wiltshire town of Marlborough. I had a great comment on that, and uh, there's a couple of reasons I want to mention this comment. First of all, it's a great comment in itself, but also the person that's commented on it. I want to mention something about them. And it's from Alice Goss, who I've met up with a couple of times on collaborations here on West Country Wanderings, and I hope to do that again very soon. And Alice writes, I was in Marlborough about two years ago. I was diverted off the M4. The M4 is about three or four miles to the north of Marlborough for carriage repairs there. And all of my passengers enjoyed their unscheduled trip in Marlborough. Just to mention that Alice is actually a coach driver. That's what she does as well as doing YouTube, fitting in all those amazing videos she does right across Europe. And the reason I wanted to mention Alice this month is because she's got to a thousand subscribers now. So congratulations, Alice. I know you put so much effort into all of your videos. So brilliant and very well done. Well, I'm now in the Stevens Vale Reserve. Hope you can hear me above the trickling water beneath my feet. And this nature reserve is managed by the Avon Wildlife Trust. You're probably thinking, Avon? Well, yes, this used to be the county of Avon. We're not quite in Somerset. Somerset has its own wildlife trust. But the Avon Wildlife Trust looks after the former county of Avon. And Baines lies in part of it. Other parts of it include the city of Bristol, as well as the county of South Gloucestershire. We've done a fantastic job here keeping this nature reserve perfect and pristine. It really is tremendous. The next video was at Lantony Priory, which is actually just outside of my area, not because it's in a bordering county, because it's in a different country. In fact, it lies one quarter of a mile outside of the county of Herefordshire. And I didn't even know I was going to make that video until I got there. I'll explain. My auntie lives in Herefordshire near the town of ross on wye and I went out there with her partner on a mystery tour. She told me we were going to go to somewhere really, really special and it certainly didn't disappoint. I'd been in that area many, many moons ago, back in the 1970s, on a school trip walking in the Black Mountains. That location was Lantony Priory, an amazing priory, which was, yes, you guessed it, abandoned in the Reformation. It also has links to Lantony Secunda Priory, which is in Gloucester. And we're looking at that when I do my extended Gloucester City video, which will be ooh, 20A, I think it'll be, on the Seven Way. I had a great comment on my Lantony Priory from Parkinson's Walks, a gentleman called Ron, who also lives in Gloucestershire. I'll read it to you now. Very simple comment, but very eloquent. I can imagine you felt the vibes when you were there. Yes, exactly wrong. Thank you very much for that. Very simple comment, but really good because that is exactly how I felt. I edited the film in reverse order, a little bit of secrets to how I do filming sometimes. Because we arrived at Lantony Priory, parked up there, I did some photography in and around the Abbey ruins. We then walked up. I can't remember the name of the hill now, but there's a hill that overlooks Lantony Priory, and I did some video clips looking down on it. And that's how the video opened and I did the whole thing in reverse order to what I filmed it. Well, just to mention, I do apologise if the footage at this point is slightly grainier and not quite as sharp and clear as it normally is. That's because the ISO is whacked up. Because the sun's only just come up, it's still pretty dark here in the woods. So apologies for that. But uh, hopefully it's made up by the fact we're in beautiful surroundings here. The other thing to say about this footpath is that it's also a route, a major route, footpath route, called the Limestone Link. And it links the limestone area of the Cotswolds to the limestone area of the Mendip Hills in Somerset. I actually came across it when I was doing the Cotswold Way near Marshfield. The exact name of that village now escapes me. I'll put the name of it below. But I remember sitting outside a church and seeing a sign saying Limestone Link and the footpath diverging away from the Cotswold Way. But you can walk it all the way right into the heart of the Mendips around Cheddar.
Now this location, Stevens Vale Nature Reserve, courtesy of the Avon Wildlife Trust, thank you, is really quite hidden. And you're probably thinking, how did I come to know about it? Because of course I don't live in Baines or around this area at all. Well, it was actually thanks to Facebook. I know Facebook gets a lot of knocks because of things like scams and that sort of thing, but actually I saw it on the pages of Somerset Live and they were promoting it here. So I thought, I saw it, waterfall in Baines, Bath and North East Somerset. I thought, oh, where's that? Thinking it'd be on the coast because there are a few on the coast in West Somerset. Didn't know about this one here in this terrific woodland. Talking about Facebook, I also run a group called West Country Wanderings on Facebook. It's going nicely now. We now have 150 members. So if you subscribe to West Country Wanderings, but you're also on Facebook, but you're not yet in the group West Country Wanderings, then it's well worth doing so. Just tap in West Country Wanderings in Facebook and request to join the group. It's a closed group, so there's no scams or anything like that inside the group once you're in it. And once you're in it, you can also share your own photographs and video clips of fantastic places like this, right across the wider West Country, which includes the three counties of Worcestershire, Gloucestershire, Herefordshire, where I was close to doing Lantony Abbey, as well as places like Baines, Bristol, North Somerset, Wiltshire, Dorset, Devon and Cornwall. I think I've covered everything there. Oh, and I also cover uh, little bits of South Warwickshire and West Oxfordshire as well. You're probably thinking, why do I do that? Well, of course, that is because I cover the Cotswolds, the entire of uh, the Cotswold AOMB, and it touches into those two counties as well. So anything in those areas, you're most welcome to share your own photographs and places that you've seen around this fantastic area that we've seen. I also put on there little snippets, photographs, which don't get used in the videos, and little clips and snippets and behind the scenes, that sort of thing. So uh, you'll be able to get more content for free. It's free to join here on West Country Wanderings on Facebook. The wood behind me isn't actually part of the Wildlife Trust, the Avon Wildlife Trust at uh, Stevens Vale. It's called Greyfield Wood. And it was actually used during the filming of Robin of Sherwood. I think that was made by HTV, Harlick Television, one of the ITV local television companies. They had a Bristol division, which made quite a few, a handful of really excellent dramas, some children's dramas. And uh, after the Britons, I remember, because they filmed that not far from when I was growing up at Woodchester Park near Stroud. But yeah, Robin of Sherwood was filmed here, Greyfield Wood, near the village of Halotro. If you're a regular viewer to West Country Wanderings, you know I do several series. I've got my Seven Way series. I've previously had the Cotswold series, and I've now got a Cotswold walking series, a railway series, but also a canal series. And it was one of the canal series I did next on the channel. And it was another trip on the Wilts and Barks Canal, which is undergoing a lot of restoration. Just as a recap, it goes from Semington on the Wilts, not the Wilts and Bucks, no, it is the Wilts and Bucks. It goes from Semington Locks on the Kennet and Avon Canal, which of course flows between Bath and Reading, and then heads up kind of in northeast direction, heading towards the town of Abingdon upon Thames, where of course it meets the River Thames. There's lots of sections where it's being restored, and there's one of those near the town of Chippenham, which I looked at in that video. And an excellent comment on that video. It's quite long, but I will read it to you because I think you'll find it really interesting. Some gentleman called Michael Johnson. Thank you very much, Michael, for your comment. And as I appreciate all your comments, I have some fantastic ones. Really enjoyed the content regarding the restoration of the old canal route, talking about the Wilts and Barks. I live to a disused section of the Cromford Canal. Now, I think I haven't done a research on this. I think the Cromford Canal is in Derbyshire. I'll put that the exact location of it down in the subtitles below. In fact, the route of the canal runs past the bottom of my garden. Wow, that sounds fantastic. The Cromford Canal Restoration Society has started work in reopening part of the canal from Langley Mill Basin to Brinsley. I hope one day to see canal barges slowly passing the end of my garden again. 
Well, yes, that'll be a fantastic thing to see there, Michael. And that brilliant comment there, it's wonderful. Following the progress as a restoration of old canals, and I do appreciate it takes some considerable time, effort and devotion and lots of volunteers and man hours to do so. But uh, the results are worth it in the end. This month I've made three videos in my seven way series, actually now got from the city of Worcester to the city of Gloucester. So some 35 miles to go to get to the destination point at Bristol. It's really exciting to, as we head on now, seems to be making good progress. I'm really, really enjoying the experience and what we can see along the way. As I say, there'll be a one-off special covering the city of Gloucester as a standalone video. I've not filmed that one as yet. But the first of the three that's landed on the channel for the month of August was the section from Worcester down to the lovely town of Upton upon Severn. I really enjoyed that and I had a great comment from Martin Bradshaw. Hi Paul, you asked for information about Stanbrook Abbey. Yes, now as I was heading out of Worcester, about three or four miles south of the city of Worcester, I was looking in a westerly direction and I could see a church and next to the church looked like a large manor house or a fantastic country house. And I looked at my OS map and it said Stanbrook Abbey, of which I knew nothing. When I got back home, I found out that it's now a very, very luxurious hotel, one of the finest hotels in the whole of the United Kingdom. But Martin continues with his comment. It was a working abbey until 15 years ago, when the nuns moved out. And as he says, it's now a luxury hotel. So thank you very much for that, Martin. Additional information there. So yes, it's only in comparatively recent times it's been converted into that wonderful hotel. I think that's way out of my price range. <laughs> now the village of High Littleton can trace its origins back to earliest part of Saxon times, around the 8th century. I mean, we're coming across a fantastic Saxon church, which you probably haven't seen yet, which is on my next Seven Way video, which should be landing before the end of August. More about that in a bit. The village here at Hallotro, we're kind of halfway between the two at the moment, is actually older than that, although they don't know the exact date, but it may have started around the five or six hundred periods. The atmosphere and the source of income for both these villages changed dramatically in 1623, because I'm currently standing on what is still the Somerset coal field, and the cholera's started around that time they became rather extensive in the 17th century and into the 18th century, but there was a decline going into the 19th century and they were all worked out by, I think the last one went up to 1969 at nearby Kilmersdon, which I've done a separate video about because that is where Jack and Jill come from. Yes, the Jack and Jill. If you're a new subscriber, you've not seen that one out, I'll put a link to it. But yeah, unbelievably, Jack and Jill were actual people, real people. It wasn't just a fable. And they came from the village of Kilmersdon, which is only just a few miles away from here. Now this woodland here at Greyfield, which as I say was used for the filming of Robin of Sherwood, is mixed deciduous woodland. So we've got lots of oak trees, lots of ash, although some have decided, got that disease, haven't they? Was it ash dieback? Thankfully not too many here. We've also got some pines here as well, but none of that, to, it's not a conifer plantation, and I say it's open access and managed by the Woodland Trust. Another series that's popular on my channel is my railway series. And it was to one of those that I headed next. The railway series are a mixture of things like lost railway walks and exploring old railway lines. Also new things as well. I've done a recent couple on some new stations, more about one of those in a bit. But I also visit heritage lines. Not far from here is actually part of the Somerset and Dorset Railway. There is a little centre in the town of Midsummer Norton, which is the biggest town hereabouts. But it wasn't to that that I went to, but it was into West Gloucestershire. And it was another visit back to the ever popular Dean Forest Railway, which of course lies in the wonderful Forest of Dean. 
Now each time I've been doing videos on that I've been selecting part of the line which goes from Lydney which is a major town in the Forest of Dean with its own harbour and canal as well on the Severn it owes right up into the forest to a place called Park End. Just outside the town of Lydney though they have their centre there where you've got their parking facilities. I decided to go there by train and walk from Lydney Town Station right not that Lydney Town Station because they have one as well but the Lydney Station that's on the main line between Gloucester and Chepstow and Newport and walk to Norchard. It's about a couple of miles or so. Delightful the way I went following the River Lyd and had a look around their Norchard Steam Centre. Had a terrific comment on that from Ian Kay. You got me thinking now Paul. How does a steam locomotive go backwards? When I was small my grandfather gave me a book how things work and I remember there was a section on steam engines showing the internal workings of the pistons. Sadly I no longer have the book. Now I had a reply to that from a gentleman called Vin Blick who's not only a subscriber to the channel and also on Facebook but he was the actual engine driver of the steam train you can see in that very video and he replies to Ian the lever in question is what's known as a reverser. So where we have like a gear, so if, you, if you have a manual car with a gear, manual gearbox, you have a gear stick on the steam engine, it's called a reverser. And there are three positions, mid, effectively neutral, forward and reverse. But Ian goes on to ask the question, presumably the drive pistons work in both directions with inlet and exhaust valves at both ends so power is provided in both directions in the piston. He goes on to ask another question and what he said is going to ask to get the full engineering explanation of that next time he visits a heritage line. Well that'd be fantastic Ian, I'd love to hear from you when you get the full answer but uh, thank you Ian for that great comment and thank you Vin for not only replying to Ian's comment but also making that day really, really special with some spectacular shots of steam engine going through the Forest of Dean. I've now come down to the base of the waterfall, come back out of a greyfield wood and back in the nature reserve again. So I want to have this place for myself. I've seen a few dog walkers around this morning. It's gone really, really quiet again now. It's a little bit brighter, so hopefully it's a little bit less grainy than it was when we were back in the wood here. But yeah, this is just a magical spot, just surrounded by peace, tranquility and nature. I try to be quite productive on the channel, so if I'm going further distance away from where I live in Gloucestershire, I like to make two videos in the same day. If I can, maybe one of them will be a short bite. Well, I caught the train down to Devon recently and I was amazed that I managed to make not two videos, but three. One of which was to the wonderful spot of Dawlish Warren. I was a bit apprehensive about going there because obviously it's August. August is not my favourite month. It tends to be a very wet month, has been for the past 10 or 15 years. It's not the August that I remember from my childhood. It's a very, very different August now with climate change. It tends to be very hot, though it hasn't been so hot this year. And also it tends to be very busy on the trains and the motorways and the main roads as well. But anyway, I caught the train to Dawlish Warren. The trains weren't too bad. Frequent service to Dawlish Warren station there. And it was like a game of two halves, that video really. Took you around the fun fair, showing you some of that. We even had a bit of a Punch and Judy show. But right next to all of the holiday attractions, you also have an, also another nature reserve this time one on the shoreline of the River X estuary and the English Channel as well. Had a great comment on that video as well. A gentleman called Richard Price. Hi Richard, thank you for your comment. As a local bird watcher, I visit the Warren many times throughout the year. Yes, it really is a uh, bird watcher's paradise there. It's fantastic. It really is a special place and home to much rare flora and fauna. The end of the beach is always quiet, but this is a major bird roosting area, so it's just as well. By the last groin, if you're not sure what a groin is, that's G-R-O-Y-N-E, they're like wooden structures that jut out from the land into the sea. 
and they're designed to protect the sand being drifted away on the tide and when we get storms to protect the sand there. This is the last one, so the furthest one is the one closest to the railway station and the fun fair. So on the furthest end of the beach, you can access Warren Point, which is a large scrub area with a circular path giving fantastic views of the river towards Exeter. Unfortunately, I didn't get quite to see that, so thank you very much for that, Richard. So when I return to Dawlish Wine, I'm sure I will at some future point here on West Country Wanderings, because I was most delighted with there. As I say, you've got all the attractions there, you've got places there to eat and drink and that, but you also, you can take yourself off and you have places which are just as quiet as what we are here today in Bath and North East Somerset. Now I mentioned just now that near here is the town of Midsummer Norton which has a railway museum and a little bit of track devoted to the Somerset and Dorset and it was to another one of my railway series that I also visited the Somerset and Dorset. In fact it was to where the Somerset and Dorset started in the town of Glastonbury. It was the Somerset Central Railway embryonically that spread out west to reach the town of Highbridge and later on to the resort of Burnham-on-Sea with the intention of getting paddle steamers coming down from South Wales, particularly Cardiff and also Bristol as well. So it was a lost wary walk exploring the line that went in a westerly direction towards the little hamlet of Shapwick. Well, actually it's a village at Shapwick, but the railway station that was there is some two miles, two and a half miles are from there. I've got a lot of interest in that video, it seems to have gone down really well. It was a most delightful walk, it was a very changeable day. We had sun and we had rain and it was cloudy, but lots of interesting lighting things. And it went right across the Somerset Wetlands Nature Reserve as well. The comment was from Richard Bird. Hello Paul, you were asking about the rather grand building still remaining at the site of Glastonbury Station. Yes, there is a red bricked building which is next to the builder's yard. I think there's a timber merchant there. And I thought, it looks like it must be something to do with railway, but I couldn't be sure of it. This was one of the Somerset and Dorset offices. Now, since I've made that video, so thank you very much for that, Richard. Richard continues, I'll tell you about that in a minute. I bought a book from my local second-hand bookshop. It's actually the Cotswold Canals Trust bookshop, so they're well worth checking out if you're in the Stroud area. They have a great one at Brimscombe. They had a book there on the Somerset and Dorset. Picked it up for a bargain, £2. It's really detailed, and it mentions about that. It also mentions it was a hotel at some point as well. So it was offices and for the Somerset and Dorset hotel accommodation right next to Glastonbury railway station. Richard continues in his comment, which is really interesting, I didn't know this, the Somerset and Dorset employed mainly lady crossing keepers for their level crossings, and we come across a couple of old ones in the video, and their homes were supplied with water in churns brought by the railway and dropped off by the crews of the old s and That's an amazing fact there, Richard, I didn't know that, and I really appreciate your comment. Thank you. I did a couple of short bites this month. If you're not familiar with my short bites, they tend to be videos around between five and 10 minutes long, usually around about five minutes. And sometimes they have no sound, or well, they have sound, ambient sound, or no music. Sometimes they've got music, sometimes they're video, sometimes they are photographs. Often they don't have commentary with it, as was the case with my five minutes in Glastonbury video. So after I got back to Glastonbury, when I arrived there, just to let you know, it was very, very busy. So I thought, oh, I can't really. I wanted to take some photographs around it. It was just very, very busy. After I got there, there in the evening, after I'd done the walk, the Lost Railway walk, I thought I'd have a wander around Glastonbury. We decided to do it some video clips and I just added in a bit of music. It was some ambient sound in that as well, just from the sound of what was happening in the town there. I had a great comment on that video from David Bernlani, who lives in Spain. Glastonbury looks a very interesting place to visit. The Glastonbury thorn is only grown there and flowers twice a year. There was a legend attached to how it arrived. Yes, I think isn't that something to do with the one with Joseph of Arimathea? I think so. We will return to Glastonbury because obviously what I haven't covered in Glastonbury is the Abbey. 
and the tour. Now, it was, as I say, it was very busy, so I will come back to that town again, the future point, to cover both of those things. And there'll be more short bites on the channel in the not too distant future. The next seven way one was 19, and this was the leg from Upton upon Severn to the wonderful Gloucestershire town of Cheeksbury. So we left Worcestershire and headed into Gloucestershire. We've still got two more counties to go, so we still have to get through Gloucestershire and into South Gloucestershire and then into Bristol. But I had a great comment on that one. That was from John Timbrell. Hi, John. I think he lives in the Forest of Dean. Gives me some additional info about some of the questions I posed in the video. There was a boat parked up at up to the Pond 7 on the River 7 with tables inside it. And he says not only is that used for meals served at Upton, it also does trips down to Tewkesbury as well. So yes, that'll be fantastic. I love, I love a good boat trip. We had one in the, this month as well, which I'll, I'll mention in a bit. He also said about Lammas Meadow, which I said was, it started 1st of August and it, it went through to the early part of the following year. And the reason that, that was because the cattle didn't go on the meadow up until the 1st of August, to allow the grass to grow properly. And also for biodiversity, this is in the days when they weren't even knew what the, the, the word meant biodiversity, but they knew what to do best in terms of the cattle. So yes, Lammas Meadow that we come across there. He also mentioned that there were some lakes in the video which were alongside the River Severn and they were dug out not for gravel, but for flood prevention, which is really interesting. I didn't know that. So thank you very much for that, John. And finally, my bridge, which I have neglected to mention, was built by Thomas Telford. We've come across a couple of Thomas Telford bridges, haven't we, on the Seven Way, and that one is there. It is also, I believe, a Grade 1 preserved status on that as well. So thank you very much for those comments, John, and the additional information. He's also given me some hints and tips for the next section as well. So I re really appreciate that. The next video was also a railway series one. This one wasn't a heritage line or a lost railway walks. It was looking at a new station, which is always good to see new stations own. And the new station was in Devon. That was the third one I visited in the area. And that was at Marsh Barton, about three miles south of, two or three miles south of the city centre, which lies on the, well, it's kind of on the Avocet line and on the Riviera line. So it's basically the trains that go between Paynton and Exmouth. So the Exmouth on the, the Eversett branch runs along the River X. And the trains that stop in Marshall, they only go every hour, not every half hour, because the frequency of the other services every half hour. Great new station there, because it serves the Exeter Riverside Country Park, as well as access to both the river and the canal. More about that canal in a bit. And I had a great comment on that video from Louise from Southwest Sundays. Well done, Louise, on getting over 900 subscribers now as well. So that's fantastic. I think next time, last time I mentioned you just got to 800. So <laughs> it only seems a few weeks ago. So you've really done to get crack on with uh, getting 100 subscribers since the last time I mentioned it. So really well done for that. And Louise writes, really good to see that you can get off the train and walk into the countryside just minutes later. Yes, that's a brilliant to do. So thank you very much for that comment, Louise. It's it's excellent. So you're out. I, I'm not a fan of cities. You know, I do explore them, like looking at history and cathedrals and old buildings, but uh, I always find them a bit too. Woo. So it's great. You just get on the train there at uh, either Extra Central or St David's, and then you're whisked away into the countryside. Brilliant. We had another short bite in the month as well, and this time I went to a, a nature reserve. Not that dissimilar to this one, and it was a formal gravel pit near the Cotswold village of Kemerton beautiful part of the cops there it's kind of undiscovered so it's just our this country wandering secret this one but uh, near there there was a nature reserve it is quite a good walk about a mile mile and a half to get to the lake there and the bird hide from where you park your car by the side of the road i think it's kingsham kingsham the village between kemerton and kingsham uh, i'll put a link in that video to the trust that looks after the nature trust that looks after it had some great comments on that, including one from Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Just peace and natural sounds. Not long. No music. No talking. Please do more of these short bites. Countryside, canals, rivers, sea, parks. Yes, thank you very much for that, Kathy. And uh, well, yes, I, I indeed I will. And uh, I, I do enjoy uh, doing those. Um, they're, they're very good fun to do. They, they are kind of easy because I don't, I haven't got any words, have I? So uh, I don't have to remember anything. So it's great. There's no, there's no pieces to camera. It's just uh, me either doing photography or filming. But uh, so that is, that's, that's great. 
Yeah, the only couple of provisos I'd say that. First of all, the views on those are a lot less um, than the, the ones like, say, a, a canal one or a railway one or like the Seven Way. So they, they don't get lots of views, um, but then there's less effort that goes into them. So, so that's fine. I'm not bothered about that. The main problem with them uh, in terms of ambient sound is noise, yes. Now, this woodland here is today is, is really quiet, so it's, it's been absolute privilege to be able to do my monthly vlog here in uh, uh, Stevens Vale here in Bath and North East Somerset. The trouble I have with that one, I'll let you an inside secret, is that all of the audio in that video, every single bit of it, not one bit of it was recorded on location. You may be surprised to, to know that. I had to dub every single video clip in that video. I couldn't use any of the audio. And the reason I couldn't use any of the audio is because in a field opposite the lake was a combine harvester. And if you've ever heard a combine harvester working, you'll know just how noisy they are. I mean, this was really loud. I could have been next to Heathrow Airport. That was the same effect in terms of noise volume. It was very, very loud. And it just destroyed all of the audio in that location. And after I'd filmed it, I, although I was pleased with some of the shots I got, I was felt disappointed thinking, how am I gonna make a video out of this? Because the audio is just awful. <laughs> My immediate thought was just to stick a load of music over the top. And, I, and then I thought, well, I have got audio I've used on on location in other places, like on my Cotswold Walks, for example. And that's exactly what I did. So I went through my back catalogue, found some clips which I felt were suitable to the location in terms of the landscape of the birds and everything and the lake that I could use for that particular video. So inside to trigger what happened with it. So that sometimes they're not always quite as simple as they appear to be. So that actually that five minute video turned out to be quite a bit of work indeed, because you have to match the videos with an appropriate piece of audio. It can't just be any old piece of audio. It has to kind of match what you're seeing on the screen. For example, the bee. So you have to get find a shot where you've got a bee noise. That's not always easy to do, but uh, I think I pulled it off. So I don't think anybody noticed. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, so I will be doing more of them though, Kathy, that side. But uh, it is difficult to find quiet places these days. We seem to be getting in a, an increasingly noisy world. And that's why I really appreciate places like this. Two more videos in the month, and the next one was a canal one again. It was the Exeter Shipman Canal. That is the third video that I filmed when I was down in and around the Exeter area, down to Dawlish as well. And uh, yeah, so I combined that with a boat trip on the canal. So I was telling about the history of the canal and also looking at the boat trip, what you can see from the boat going up into Exeter Basin. It's a fascinating canal. And it, as I said in the video, it's the first proper canal in the whole United Kingdom. There has been others. There was the Romans, they did canals, but that was only for irrigation, for moving water from one location to another. And also there was the Glastonbury Medieval Canal, which I mentioned in my Lost Railway Walks, but that was only for a very short distance and for a specified short period of time. The Exeter Ship Canal, of course, is still very much running and working. A great comment from Diana Rolf on that video. Thanks for the comprehensive history of the canal and surroundings. I've always wondered about the Countess and the roundabout. I was impressed by the boat hopping boat crew. Thank you very much for that, Diana. Yes, in the video there, I talk about the Countess of Devon who built her weir, which caused all the problems in the first place as to why the canal needed to be built because it blocked the access for the ships getting up from the English Channel into the important city of Exeter. So yes, it was down to her. And they named a roundabout after the Countess Weir roundabout. Notorious, always covered in jams. And also the boat trip. Yes, you had those very athletic boatmen that kept jumping off the boat, going onto the bridges and opening up the swing bridges and back on again. Hopefully no, <laughs> they don't have any mishaps to that because they seem to just do it with ease, but uh, it just looked a little bit precarious, but uh, great fun to watch and to film as well. So what's coming up on the channel then? Well, we haven't actually quite finished August as I film this. Another seven way one should be landing, which takes us into the city of Gloucester. And then next month in the month of September, there'll be a special one on Gloucester itself. And that'll be heading down to places like Framelode and Frampton on seven in September as well, or being well. I've also got another railway series one coming up looking at the Vale of Evesham Railway, which is a fascinating narrow gauge railway in a garden centre 
near the town of Evesham in Worcestershire. That's well worth uh, looking at. I, I really enjoyed my afternoon there. I did film that last uh, Sunday, so uh, yeah, not long ago, and it was a terrific day there having a trip on the train around that wonderful, quite extensive track they've got, including a tunnel as well. So that's be, be coming up too. I've got a couple of short bike ones planned. In the month of September proper, then we've got another couple of lost railway walks, including one to Tidenham Tunnel, and also one exploring the extensions that are planned for the Dean Forest Railway in the Forest of Dean. So look out for those as well. And also in September, I'm planning a trip to the South Devon coast. I'm going to be based in and around the town of Brixham. So be, hopefully be some content on that. Oh, I forgot to mention that I haven't done anything from the county of Cornwall for a while because it's been very busy with the summer. Always the case this time of year. I am planning to do a trip to Cornwall in the month of October. So there'll be something, several videos popping up from Cornwall in and around October. But you expect to see some from Devon in September. I hope you've enjoyed the content on West Country Wanderings this month. So not quite the end, there's still a couple more videos to land and I do appreciate all of your comments. Sadly, I haven't got time to read all of them out, but I've just uh, selected a few for you, which I thought you'd find interesting. Thank you also if you've watched any of my videos this month, particularly if you've liked or shared them, and also if you're a new subscriber to the channel as well really do appreciate that and the journey here on West Country Wanderings continues I've had a couple of people that have said to me you're surely going to run out of places well no I found this one today this is an amazing location here in Bath and North East Somerset but there's still loads and I've got a long long list of places that I'd like to go to I've only scratched the surface of certain places I've hardly done anything in Dorset Evan for example I've hardly scratched the surface in Dorset and there's loads in both Devon and Cornwall to cover as well as well as loads in the Cotswolds which I've Places that pop up on YouTube, see place I'm thinking, I don't even know where that is, and it turns out it's even it's in Gloucestershire. I've never heard of it. So there's loads and loads of places for me to visit and bring to you here on YouTube. So I really appreciate your input as well, very much so. Until next time on West Country Wanderings, take care of yourselves, look after yourselves, and I hope to see you on the channel again very, very soon. Thank you for watching my monthly vlog today. All the best. Bye bye.